Hello, my name is John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. Today we are going to look at the construction of a CVT, Continuously Variable Transmission, uh, push belt. The belt that goes between the two pulleys that I have back here on a continuously variable transmission. I get a lot of questions from my students and, and other people asking, how can a belt be made out of steel and still be flexible and hold up? And so I've got a belt that is all taken apart uh, right here on this bench, and we will put it together to make a full uh, belt right here today. Um, these belts are directional. Um, there's an arrow on the belt as you can see right here, that points in the direction of rotation. And this is called a push belt. And that means that the pulley, which is this one right here, that connects to the engine through the torque converter, is going to push this belt rather than pull it uh, and push it to the other pulley, the driven pulley, to make the vehicle move. And so I'll show you what a push belt uh, means. But let's look at the construction of this belt first. Um, if we look real closely here, you can see that there are some what are called uh, ring packs. Um, this is a ring pack. And there's one on this side of the CVT belt. There's one over here on this side of the CVT belt. These ring packs are made of individual little rings and you you can have nine rings or you can have 12 rings the more rings there are the more torque the cvt belt and the transaxle uh, can handle uh, people ask me all the time how do you how come uh, cvts can't uh, handle much power well they can handle uh, more power depending on how many rings they have in their ring pack uh, these rings hold a whole bunch of what are called elements. If we look closely here, you can see there's a whole bunch of these little elements here. And right here on the table, I have uh, a single element uh, sitting here. In this belt right here, there are 399 of these uh, little elements sitting in here they are directional they have a little bump on them that forces it to go in in one direction so these elements sit on the ring pack like that and then there's another ring that sits in that upper groove and holds the elements in place so there's two sets of ring packs there's 399 of these elements and on the edge of these elements, uh, there are a whole bunch of little ridges that help it uh, grab the pulley sheaths, the surface of the, these pulleys. They're actually called sheaves or variators on some uh, CVT transmissions they're referred to, to, to vary the pulley drive to driven uh, pulley ratio. So there's 12 rings in a ring pack. So there's the first, or the outermost one, and I have it labeled as the twelfth, <laughs> the twelfth one. Each one of these is a slightly different diameter, so that it can fit inside of the uh, previous one. So then we just come in, put the eleventh, the tenth, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So now we have another complete ring pack. Here's our two ring packs. And as I said, the, the little elements sit in between. Uh, those ring packs. They're held in place. They're guided by the um, 
the ring packs. Uh, when a CVT belt fails, a lot of times one of these rings has cracked and broken and it no longer can hold the elements in a straight, uh, straight line. All right, now I mentioned that this is a push belt and all 399 of these elements are put on these ring packs, as I mentioned. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that uh, I have four rows of these uh, elements. Obviously, I would have uh, three rows of 100 and one row of 99. But you'll notice that um, if I hold them together and push, then it's like a solid bar. And that solid bar is what connects the drive pulley to the driven pulley in a CVT. It pushes like a big solid bar that connects at each pulley with the 700 PSI of fluid pressure and all that force, all that square, uh, all that area, the square inches or square centimeters of, of area in there, it puts a lot of downward force on these elements. And so when you put all of these together, um, it just ends up being a push belt on the one side that pushes, and then the other side, there's no force on it at all. It just comes back, it's guided back on these ring packs for the next turn uh, around the pulley to push uh, the belt, to push the pulley some more. So as you can see here, there's the arrow, there's a part number, um, the arrow of, of rotational direction. Okay, so I'm just going to start with a couple of stacks of the elements. Set it on the ring pack. Oh, that... <laughs> Of course, that happens, makes a big mess. These are directional, as I said, so you have to make sure they're all facing the same direction. It's quite easy because they have this bump uh, on the end of each element that aligns the elements. These need to be very clean. You don't want any dirt or dust or anything uh, interfering with the fit of these elements. These elements are tapered a little bit so that they can also uh, turn the corner uh, or go around the pulley at an arc. Almost half of it together. These individual elements are not purchasable. You have to replace the entire belt. But if you accident or when you're disassembling a CVT, uh, you really should put some zip ties around the whole ring pack assembly and all the elements or to hold the both ring packs in place so the elements can't fall out. Uh, if you take one of these apart and it just suddenly falls all over the, the place you can reassemble it. Like I said it needs to be very clean and you need to pay attention to the proper orientation of every single of the 399 <laughs> Uh, elements, but it can be done. There's part number and the arrow on here. If you mix those up, uh, it'll be er, it'll be difficult to determine which direction it's supposed to turn. Although you can look at the edge of these elements. There's a slight taper to the edge. They're not at a nice uh, square edge with a 90 degree end. I don't know what angle it is, but it's, 
it's not 90 degrees. Okay, we're just about done with all the elements. Getting the last couple of ones in it can be a challenge. Okay, so I've got all the elements installed, but if I try to pick this up, it's just going to fall all over the place. So we need the other ring pack to go down uh, on the other side of all these elements to hold it in place. And this can be sort of interesting to install. It has to go down evenly. If one side drops more than the other, it's that tight of a tolerance. It doesn't want to go down. Uh, if you try to lift one of these ring packs up and it's stuck in the groove, rotate it while you're lifting and that'll help um, get it back out. Just about there. There we go. Okay. So I pushed. I'm going to keep force on both ring packs, but we've now taken 399 elements. We've got our arrow of directional rotation. We've got two ring packs of 12 little thin, they're seven and a half thousandths of an inch thick each one. Um, so 90 thousandths for 12 of them uh, put all together uh, thick for these uh, ring packs. So that's uh, 24 and 399. That is 423 pieces just in this flexible uh, CVT belt. So that is the construction of a CVT belt. And like I said, put some zip ties around it uh, as you're removing it and reinstalling it uh, in the transmission so that it doesn't scatter and fall all over the place. Thank you for watching.